Hi all, this is Juliana Avdeeva. Welcome to the weekly stream. Tonight, again, you maybe recognize the place I'm sitting in front of the Chopin, Frederick Chopin Museum in Warsaw, and I'm very, very happy to be back here. It's, um, of course, October uh, is also a very special time for me in Warsaw. It's a long time that I, I think I was not here in October since the 2010 competition, and of course, this month in this place uh, awakes very special memories, very special, special me uh, feelings, and um, yeah, I'm delighted uh, that I can be here tonight and perform tomorrow night at 7.30 a piano recital as a part of the master recitals um, here at the Warsaw Philharmonic Hall, because the Chopin competition, which has uh, was actually uh, about to um, take place this year, had to be postponed to the next year, and this uh, that's why uh, there are quite many exciting recitals here taking place these days. Hi, everyone. It's great uh, to see you, to see you all here. Thanks a lot for joining. It's a pleasure to share this wonderful place with you. So, um, well, we'll talk about uh, Chopin later, but anyway, tonight we are moving to the last major prelude and fugue from the book one, Johann Sebastian Bach. So we are really coming to the end of major preludes and fugues. To, uh, this is the last uh, pair. And um, yeah, it's uh, basically B major, of course, is a very special, again, one very special um, tonality. And um, it has a, a great light on one hand. For me personally, I, I feel it's a, like it's like polar star. It's a, it's a great, great uh, also brightness uh, coming from this star, but it's somehow a little bit in distance. That's how I feel about the B major. Although it's, um, uh, of course, a, a very positive, very, yeah, very, very, yeah, positive, well, positive to keep uh, good tonality. Um, actually, uh, Chopin was the uh, person, let's say, he was so convinced about the uh, that the B major is one of the most natural uh, tonalities for the piano, and that's how he, what, uh, that was the key he started uh, work on with his uh, students, of course, who were beginners, because in his uh, opinion: The position on, of the uh, black keys was very natural in for the for the uh, hand in the B major, and um, I think this is um, actually a very exciting thought that also Chopin somehow was uh, still was um, thinking a lot about the also the comfort about the keys being more or less comfortable. So in his view the C major key was the less comfortable and actually the most difficult because of the lack of any black keys. So coming back to B major, uh, there are actually not so many pieces in this key. Maybe you will, uh, some, some will come um, uh, to your mind. Uh, maybe some 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 pieces. Of course, the from the pieces we uh, have discussed together recently was the uh, Beethoven fantasy. Uh, there is also Haydn Symphony uh, 49 uh, in in the B major, but actually Brahms Trio Number no. One is coming to coming up to mind. Maybe you have some other ideas uh, uh, about other pieces in this key. But anyway, of course, it's very often appears in the in the uh, in the ending of the uh, B minor pieces, like also, for instance, Third uh, Chopin Sonata or Manfred Symphony by Tchaikovsky. Uh, but actually, still, it's also not that often used. So this pair is again a very, is in a way, in a way, in a spring mood. So it's very um, gentle, very uh, charming in a way. And the connection in this uh, uh, pair uh, between the prelude and fugue is very, very um, audible. Because I will, I will, I will uh, demonstrate it. So the prelude is actually um, starts with again with the up uh, going line. So it's the uh, movement is going up. 
up to the sky. Um, and actually, it's, it's more like invention, uh, like uh, three-part uh, invention, where later on it gets a little bit more in the end. Uh, we have uh, four or even five um, uh, parts, so it gets a little bit big, but still the mood is very pastoral. It's very uh, easygoing. It's very positive. And um, there are some, of course, some, for instance, bar seven, wonderful, very beautiful uh, modulations. It's more like a like a cloud uh, on a still on a very blue, beautiful sky. So it's not really um, tragic modulation. It's just a, yeah, it's maybe a wind or a, uh, or a cloud. So this this um, element is uh, actually appearing everywhere here in this in this prelude, and it actually look if we have this as the main element of the prelude. So the subject in the fugue starts like this. So, same configuration. This is actually probably, well, in my memory, to be honest, the first time in the entire book one where we have a real clear, uh, very obvious. Uh, relationship between the main motif in the prelude and in the fugue. So uh, in the fugue is in four parts. Uh, actually quite, yeah, they are very tight, tight composed, but not, there are no uh, stratos here. Mostly uh, also the, the, the keys of the subject are very normal, no, no somehow crazy modulations or something. There are two times uh, where the subject is uh, coming in inversion, which is in bar 18, and then it sounds like this. And uh, then also in the alto, in the uh, middle voice, um, in bar 20. But that's actually basically it. very, again, very pastoral um, mood of the fugue. So the last major prelude and fugue from book one, it's B major, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach from Warsaw for you.
the B, B major prelude and fugue from book one by Johann uh, Sebastian Bach. Of course, somehow this uh, B major is corresponding for me personally with the, those uh, keys and sharp keys like um, E major or, um, well, a little bit D major and of course F sharp uh, major, so this kind of sharp um, keys with many sharps, they have this, of course, this brightness and also sharp in sharpness in the perception, in my opinion, but still this one is maybe, um, well, it's so, so, so pastoral, so uh, easygoing. So um, Jakub is saying optimistic. Yes, that's a good, good, good word for that. I think, um, yeah, it's, um, so the last one, indeed, I can't believe that, that this last major uh, prelude and fugue, the major um, pair from the book one, but anyway, that's not the, uh, not the end. So, um, hmm, well, uh, <laughs> um, I see a question from Sabina uh, asking about the period instruments to get the right sound uh, in, in interpretation with Bach. Sabina, I think that anyway, all kind of uh, period instruments, uh, it's a great source of inspiration to play them. First of all, of course, we are coming closer to the sound which surrounded uh, the composers at the time when, the, when, they, uh, when, the, when they were composing the pieces we are playing. So anyway, it's a, it's a step, definitely a step uh, closer to the, to the intention of the, uh, of the composer. Of course, with Bach also with uh, the well-tempered clavier, it's difficult because there is no clear, there are so many also possibilities on which instruments uh, you could, he could have played uh, these preludes and fugues. But anyway, I think that um, if you have a chance to play uh, on a period instrument, it's an amazing, uh, amazing, I call it time machine, because then you are going back to the time uh, and you are surrounded by the sound, uh, which of course uh, by that time was not the sound of the modern piano and of course the also many things um, many things are getting more clear in order uh, how to read the music how to read the uh, phrasing how to read the articulation because of course it's um, uh, pedal is very very uh, very important because also for even in Chopin there are so many he writes so often those uh, long pedals also mixing harmonies and um, uh, some, some, some once you try it on a modern piano at the, at the beginning, well, you ask yourself why, wh how, how can it work? It's, it's there are so many, uh, uh, so many harmonies. How, how why sh should I take such a long pedal? But on the period instruments, the sound is different. The uh, sound is shorter, but the overtones are richer. They do have much more cloud. So it's a special effect which uh, the composer is meaning com writing this long, um, uh, uh, long pedal and um, so th also in articulation of course it makes some 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 things just get more clear uh, after you have tried them on the period instrument that's my personal experience so I uh, if I have a chance to touch it somewhere I always try to not to miss this chance because it's um, yeah it opens other uh, horizons you know you, you see a little bit further. <laughs> uh, that's uh, my personal uh, feeling about the um, um, period instruments. Bob, absolutely, yes. The, of course, colors are different because also the overtones are different and the sound itself is shorter. It's not so strong, so you have to be more, even more um, creative with the, uh, with the um, rubato, with the, uh, generally with the expression. It's a different type of expression on, on, on those uh, period um, instruments. So that's, um, yeah, that's how uh, I feel about this. So actually also here in Warsaw, I had a wonderful uh, experience playing on period instruments. Uh, I have played uh, live concerts here with the orchestra of 18th century uh, conducted by Maestro Franz Bruggen. And then also we had, a, we made a recording here uh, so the, um, I was playing on an ERA piano, on an original pia uh, ERA piano from, if I'm not mistaken, there was a piano from uh, 1840, 
seven, so it's a very, with a great, great uh, special sound. Uh, the piano is in a great condition, so it was a great moment for me also to work with uh, Maestro Brüggen and to record both piano concertos. And um, yeah, also this place uh, uh, will remain in my memory also this, this amazing um, time I had uh, during the rehearsal and recording sessions with uh, Maestro Brüggen and this uh, will also will remain for a very, very long time in my memories. So, but anyway, we are coming to another uh, next topic, of course, also connected with Warsaw and Chopin. Um, yeah, I, I, to be honest, today is, uh, in Warsaw it's a great, uh, great sunny day, and um, immediately I, I got, of course, the uh, great memories from 10 years ago when I was here. And if I am not mistaken, tonight or maybe tomorrow uh, will be the day 10 years ago when I performed the. Oh, Thank you so much uh, for reminding me that that was a piano from 1849. Thanks a lot. Um, yes, so the, I think probably tomorrow, 10 years ago, I have started my journey, uh, my journey through the Chopin competition, and yeah, through which is still somehow, of course, present in my life, um, playing the Nocturne Opus 62, number one in. B major, so that's why, um, as I also was working on the B major prelude and fugue, I thought, wow, um, B major anyway somehow is for me also a Chopin uh, key. And uh, then, of course, I uh, re immediately remembered that that was the piece I have started the um, Chopin competition, and as somehow I felt yeah, I felt this desire to, to uh, play uh, this nocturne and uh, the E major nocturne for you um, tonight. So, um, yes, I'm a little bit uh, moved, of course, yeah, because, yes, I was started saying that the, the, the today is a gr also here great sunny weather, and uh, that was the weather which I remember from Chopin competition 10 years ago with the great Sunshine, apparently autumn or fall was Chopin's favorite season. So, um, yeah, it's um, very special um, to, yeah, to be here again in October. So coming to the Nocturnes, because I was uh, somehow, it's, I think it's in very also, again, one genre, particularly by, uh, which was improved and also established as a independent genre um, um, by, by Frederick Chopin. We talked about um, the scherzi or uh, mazurek, of course, polonaise. Uh, it's not, you know, those, all those genres, they are, they are not only just a small, somehow small, un unimportant minor miniatures or minor pieces. They, are, they become, they have this amazing expression. They have this, um, amazing um, essence also, also in nocturnes. That's amazing uh, also to see this transformation uh, between the Chopin nocturnes st starting from Opus 9 uh, and of course finishing with the Opus uh, 62, which, is, uh, which was his last nocturnes he ever composed. So basically again here, um, he literally, yeah, he, he changed uh, the idea of, the, of those forms, and um, I think it's very, very interesting that um, Chopin was a great admirer of Italian opera. So basically, the singing on the piano is, of course, absolutely, uh, for me, it's also very, it belongs to Ch Chopin, or it, I think that it has a reason why he was also called a poet of piano. Uh, so for me, it is indeed the nocturne is a singing on the piano. And of course, some uh, nocturnes are more, uh, they are also um, built more in a more easy way, like really uh, a melody with an accompaniment, and some, especially going to the, uh, to the late period, are more sophisticated. They are, they are very polyphonic with many, many voices, which we will see 
uh, right now as well. And I was, it was great to, thanks a lot for your comments. Yeah, it was great for me to see how, how different also the perception of um, nocturnes are. And of course, uh, uh, the, 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 the earlier ones from Opus 9, Opus 15, and somehow this Opus 27, the C sharp minor and uh, D flat major, they are somehow the center, that's the point. Uh, where, where it all indeed, um, where, where, where it all started. Uh, Daniel, absolutely, that, that's, what, that's what, we're, what we're saying, that the, uh, that the mm, the, uh, Chopin managed to make out of the small vignette, small form, like uh, Nocturne or uh, Mazurek, with a really great, great expressive pieces with a great, Passion with uh, sometimes with the, with the very contrasting uh, middle part. So uh, I think, to be honest, playing nocturne is very. It's not easy. I mean, sometimes some scores look I, I, some some scores also from uh, let's say op Opus Twenty Seven Number Two. It actually doesn't look so so complicated. So we have actually uh, uh, the accompaniment in the left hand, and we have this. But it's so difficult to play because the left hand has to be absolutely independent. It has to be very even so that uh, no, no accents are coming, so that all notes are having also their own phrase. And apparently I found again from, uh, from Wil uh, Wilhelm von Lenz again a small quote about how Chopin uh, was uh, himself was... Um, um, commenting how he would uh, he wanted his students to study to practice the nocturne so what that's what he says chopin wanted the accompaniment to be studied by itself first using both hands in such a way that each quaver chord would sound like a chorus of guitars only when the accompaniment had been completely mastered with two hands in this way producing a correct and perfect sound piano and in strict tempo at, uh, then uh, you, you could improve to the right to the to the to, uh, to the right hand. So this uh, you might remember we were also talking uh, as we were talking about Rachmaninoff. Uh, this accompaniment it's not it's not just in, it's not actually just uh, accompaniment. It's a, it's a very important line. It's this base and this base which remains or should basically remain. Uh, absolutely independent. It, it should not be affected by the melody, so that the melody can really play in a very, very free manner as a uh, opera, opera singer. But the left hand is this bass, is this fu fundament, and this is so difficult, so difficult to achieve. I think so. Uh, in these op uh, opus 62 nocturnes, uh, well, first of all, Chopin com uh, composed them. Uh, in probably in 1846, so this it belongs already to his very, very last works, and uh, those works, like also Polonaise uh, Fantasy or uh, Vansos or also the Mazurkas, which are coming still a little bit later, they have it already the, this very com complicated, complex uh, polyphonic line, and again, this. Uh, this uh, advice, uh, which I, uh, I, I read for you now from Lenz, uh, that Chopin was saying also that the left hand should be played practice with both hands. Again, it reminds me so much on Bach because Bach. Uh, that's also how 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 many uh, how we practice fugues that that we divide one line one, not, yeah one line in the left hand we divide it so that we can hear different voices that so we can hear where they go to. And um, so the B major, Nocturne Opus 62, number one, um, is very, it's very polyphonic. I can show you this chord, and this, this is how it looks like. So we have, we have, uh, we have in the left hand this accompaniment in, in eight notes, but already here we have, you see we have quarter, uh, we have this movement in eight uh, notes, but we have another voices, which are always, uh, they, are, they have their own line, they have their own phrasing, and sometimes it's 
it's going absolutely on contrary with the phrasing in the right hand. But also in the right hand, we have, uh, we have, uh, we have the. So many, as I'm saying, so, so many different phrase, phrasing, and although Chopin also in this nocturne he writes very carefully the dynamics he wants to have. So many, many phrasing, many crescendi well dolce legato. He says uh, uh, in the in the beginning, but also later on those smallest smallest uh, indications they are so uh, so important. So the first, actually, the very opening, the very beginning is uh, is a great. It's like playing, uh, taking some strings on a guitar, I think. Then we have this Dolce Legato in Andante. for me somehow a reminder on this opening, uh, very opening chord. Then, uh, it's actually very expressive, but in a way also spontaneous uh, melody which we have here. And then, somehow, he modulates uh, absolutely out of, without any preparation, he modulates to A flat major, and the middle part uh, is a com in a completely different, also very different mood. So that's why I want to have a... writes an accent on this syncopation. Where am I? Here. And sometimes there is, you know, those uh, uh, marks. So it means that these syncopations are very important. And sometimes he even writes a, a, a pause. So Uncertainty of some uh, again of searching for some 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 tonality which would be uh, somehow maybe more uh, comfortable and then he, he goes to uh, uh, really absolutely um, how, how can I say this uh, far away uh, he moves so far away from also A flat uh, major we go to uh, to e, uh, to A minor. And then 
and after this section and this section and uh, 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 this section ends in E flat major, and that's how how he starts the recapitulation. Look. Italian um, area where the singer is free in the in the kind of in some sections uh, he also the singer uh, the singer or she adds some uh, some ornaments and this is all strings. <laughs> This is the uh, how the recapitulation comes, and the the end, the coda, is very special uh, uh, because we have a kind of reminder from the middle part here in the left hand. this very quiet uh, mood and the very end is for me a recitativo and this is absolutely treasure. Disappears. It disappears somehow in the in the in the ear, but in a very poetic, very inspiring way. So I am very excited to perform for you B Nocturne E Major Opus 62, Number One by Frederick.
Ranger Nocturne, Opus 62, number one. For me, I, to be honest, my heart always starts to beat quicker when I hear this piece or when I play it by myself. I didn't play it now for many years, actually, because, of course, my memories of this first opening piece of my performance at the Chopin competition of with this piece, because it was my first piece which I played in the first stage. So this was the opening of the Chopin competition for me in 2010. And of course, it is a very moving moment for me. And also now I feel that my, yeah, my, 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 my heartbeat is quicker than it normally is. But anyway, so it's um, great to play it 10 years later again here in Warsaw. So the Opus 62 number two in E major is of course somehow again corresponding with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the B major, but it's, it's also here. It's the, it is the mastery of Chopin, the way he, how many different ways of expression he has. So here we have also completely different accompaniment. We have quarter notes. There are a couple of nocturnes in this movement, you see, so we have quarter notes uh, and of course this is a completely different movement uh, than w w rather when we have uh, like in eight notes in the 60, uh, 60 number one or for instance in these are already comp uh, this is already an instruction also for uh, in, in uh, expression. So here uh, Chopin says lento, uh, and it has only the, those chords in the left hand, and the melody is like this. more simple than the B major where we had so many different uh, voices together but the expression is absolutely amazing it's such an intense very intensive piece uh, then we have the, uh, from the bar 32 we have a transit section which also leads to the middle part which is agitato so a great great contrast to the main uh, main part but the transit is again we have a new element we have 60 notes in the left hand. Again, very, very special, uh, very, in a way for me, very reflective. Uh, melody here, but more it's more concentrated. The expression is more, of course, in the left hand. And then we, uh, we move to C sharp minor, and we. very black actually because again we have we have where am I yes I'm on the right page and then in the left hand we have this canonic so it's uh, again this is very very polyphonic and uh, so many uh, canon like um, elements appearing and uh, very very molto dramatico molto agitato uh, and uh, then uh, he comes back to the, to the uh, recapitulation which is in e, e major and um, very for me is also the ending again is very special here because again uh, it, it ends with a kind of first it disappears here in the end and again 
again the recitativo. So he keeps this very important message till the very, very last bar. This is uh, somehow put, that's how I feel uh, about it. So I would, uh, I'm delighted to perform for you the Opus 62, number two, E major, Nocturne by Frederick.
major nocturne op. 60 toning number drawn by Friedrich Chopin, one of his last pieces, the last nocturne anyway, very, very expressive piece. I don't know, I don't know if it's in a way he's saying goodbye already here. It's, anyway, it's always this kind of mm, subjective, um, Music is basically s somehow very <laughs> subjective because the per perception is so different. But I think that's something, uh, something, uh, what makes the music so special. That there are so many different ways to uh, play music, to perform music, but also to to listen to. Yeah, this. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great, great pleasure to be here to share this moment with you and tomorrow night at 7 30 p.m central european time i will be playing a recital at the philharmonic hall uh yes in in warsaw at the philharmonia narodova uh, i will be playing a, a recital consisting of um well i will start with prelude opus 45 uh, in c sharp minor by Frederick Chopin, then I will play the scherzo number three in C sharp minor, opus uh, 39, followed by Mazurka's opus 41, um, third ballad in A flat, A flat major, and the Andante Spianato and Grand Polonaise Brilliant. This will be the first half of the concert, and uh, the second half is Prokofiev Sonata number eight in B flat ma major, which we have also talked about very recently and um, I'm very much looking forward to this recital tomorrow which will indeed uh, indicate the 10th anniversary of my uh, appearance at the grand stage of uh, Warsaw Philharmonic Hall. So thank you so much. This stream will be available on uh, the Facebook page of Chopin Institute on the YouTube channel of the Chopin Institute, but also on my Facebook page. Uh, it will be all, should be all available from 7.30 p.m. set, Central European time, tomorrow. So you're most welcome to join uh, me tomorrow in Warsaw at my recital. So thanks a lot for being here. And after uh, tomorrow's recital, um, I'm excited to see you all next Thursday, as usual, uh, with the last prelude and fugue from book one, um, the B minor. Uh, so next Thursday, we meet again for our weekly stream. And tomorrow, see you at the recital. See you at the Warsaw Philharmonic Hall stage. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a good week. Stay well. See you soon. Bye-bye.